Right, welcome to the debate, uh, the Youth Cabinet debate. We are looking at do schools deal effectively with bullying? Uh, we're going to start with open arguments from both sides and then we'll move on to the main debate. Um, if the schools were doing enough, would people bully? Does the school know who the bully is? And also, does the, the schools, schools think that bullying occurs if it happens more than once? But what if it's physical? And also, do they know that bullying comes home with you? They can come into school with a different face completely. And all these bullying policies say, oh, you can't bully, or oh, you can't, you know, if this happens, you, you will get a consequence, things like that. But is it really enforced? Who, who is there to actually ensure that all these policies that are put down happens? But people are there to enforce them. You've got student councils that have got special responsibility for you. You've got anti-bullying ambassadors in some schools like St Clair's. You've got special staff members that have to deal with it. And of course, every school knows that trauma is caused from bullying. Every school knows that bullying comes home with you. Everyone knows that bullying has a long-term effect. Is it really the schools we need to be focusing on, or is it someone else? Do we need to be focusing outside of school? Do we need to be focusing on areas like child line? Or should we be focusing on places like Facebook, Twitter, Ask FM recently as well? Do we need to be focusing on social networks? And should we even be going to Parliament about this? Should to be honest with you, um, schools uh, are, have the responsibility of the child when they're not at home. Where do we draw the line of responsibility? Where do we say schools are responsible for this child anymore and where do we say that they are? Where and when do parents need to be informed? Do we inform them every time someone calls them a name or do we inform them every time they get, I don't know, a broken rib? Um, I'd like to say that um, I am a living, breathing proof of that. Um, when I was in primary school, I got bullied for about three or four years, and I did go to all my teachers, I did go to, I even went to therapy for what they did to me, but not once did they contact my parents. I had to go to my own parents and tell them what was happening to me, and yet, after all them four years, nothing happened. EJ, you raised uh, a perfect sort of thing today. You've got a personal sort of a, a history with it as such, but. What that raises the point is, is that it has to be brought to the attention of the school first. We're assuming here that schools have the ability to tell when a child is being bullied based on whether or not you know, they actually see it. And unless a child does come forward, you know, not much can be done. When the child does come forward, I can understand there may be failings in places. Uh, but it, then it comes down to who you come to. So are you saying that if you're being bullied, if you don't say anything, then you can't be expect it, it's your own fault? Some people are more sensitive to other things than others, so somebody calling one person a name, it may be nothing at all, but to somebody else it may be a major problem for them. Um, bullying is not always verbal. At school you get told that it's only bullying if it happens once or more. Um, in primary school especially, when little children come uh, like tell a the teacher, they usually get called up tap, just tattletailing. Again, I can completely understand where you're coming from, but we still have to raise the issue. If the child doesn't speak out, there isn't much else that can be done. The school. I don't think that the bully decides where the line is, the school don't decide where the line is, the law doesn't, I don't think any of that does with bullying. I think the line is for the victim to decide. It's when they feel like they are getting bullied, when they feel like they are getting offended, when they know that it's upsetting them. because. Then, then what the bully may think is minor, the victim may think is a completely different thing. Sam, you raised the perfect issue on exactly how complex bullying is. As you, you know, as you said, it's for the victims. Uh, it's the victim's own job to draw the line where they decide it's bullying. But how is the school to tell where that line is? I think that the problem isn't how you define bullying; it's how the school deals with bullying. For example, like I know with girls. When someone's being bullied, it's not really that obvious because in most cases it's not physical. I know for a fact that I would not be brave enough to go up to a bully box and stick a bit of paper in there. Purely because if someone saw you, you'd become an even bigger target because people would know you were being bullied. Listening to all the points raised, especially EJ, that you said about sister as well, and my own personal experiences, it seems primary schools seem to be the worst at dealing with bullying. Secondary schools take it quite seriously. It was primary school where it hasn't been dealt with, and that's where it's carried on into secondary school. 
because it wasn't stopped at the stalls back in primary school. Bullying has to be dealt with in its own right. And if we don't tackle it younger, and we let someone become a bully when they're younger and carry on like that into their later life, we've not only created a bully, we've created a potential criminal. And that concludes the debate. So I thank you for your input. You've all done extremely well. Awesome.